tip you off if, if, if your candidate says, oh, yeah, feel free to take a look around. Don't go in the shed. <laughs> Don't go in the shed. But you know what? I, I think I feel maybe the viewers can agree with me. This is like the worst party ever. It's like where the house is trashed and the furniture's broken and the pets are missing. It's like hungover. It's like, it's like the worst thing. Three. Yeah, hangover, and in yeah. 27 days, we're going to have the worst hangover. We're going to need political oh, rehab. Are you going to miss? Are you going to miss all this? No, oh, no. But you, you know those giant carpet cleaning machines you get <laughs> from supermarkets? We need to run that over the country. Because I feel like I feel like we've been covered with muck and dirt and mud. Those work really well. They by do, the way. believe me. Yes, 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 yes. Many a frat house has rented those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Miss Dana. Um, you know, with so much going on, first of all, do we wait? I, listen, I understand that you don't want to ever say that an accuser isn't being honest, but do we wait to get a little bit more firm evidence, or, or, or what does he do? What is I don't know what he's do? doing, to be honest. I, also, I just have to say, one of the reasons that we are kind of laughing is that Kimberly was stuck in the elevator until five. <laughs> yes. 59 and 29 oh, seconds, and she yeah. still made it here, which is I was trapped, amazing team spirit. Which <laughs> normally I enjoy, because <laughs> firemen come and rescue me. This Yeah, when I was, like, locked and something. But anyway, and I was screaming, help me! <laughs> Somebody come save me! In the freight elevator. I mean, you can't make it up. Unbelievable. What are you doing in a freight elevator? <laughs> no, why did no, they put you in it's that? It's the easiest way from 12 to 1. It's really? supposed yeah, to be the fastest, and There's everyone no... makes fun of me, because I go, I'm paranoid, I'm going to get trapped Express. in here, whatever, and they press the wrong thing, and they swipe the security, and then I was there, like trapped cargo. Well, I'm afraid it was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll be right back. Well, I will be able to answer your question. No. Now. I just yeah, had to ahead. say that. Um, so last weekend, I think it was uh, Hugh Hewitt, Ben Carson, and a couple of others. Um, after the audio tape came out from Access Hollywood, they they said we anticipate that more and worse things are going to come out. And so apparently, this is it. You know, the um, thing is, that Trump has been accused by several women of sexual assault. He also was on that audio tape bragging to mm -hmm. Billy Bush about sexual assault because he is powerful. And then he said, oh, well, that's just locker room talk. So then today he was saying that there's no way that he would have sexually assaulted those women because they're not pretty enough. Ooh. And I'm like, okay, what in the actual you know what is going on? Watch your um, The other thing I thought was amazing today is you have this report out of The Apprentice where um, apparently he used to say that Marley uh, Matlin who is um, deaf, she was on Celebrity Apprentice, she used to say that she was retarded all the time. So she's responded, and she is saying how offensive it is, and so I think when the things that, that the Trump campaign has done, instead of focus on the real issues, like they say they want everybody else to do, now this story is completely into the mainstream pop culture world. And it doesn't matter what is covered on the actual news, because the most important thing, the way people get their news now, is on their phones. So from a pop culture standpoint, that's where that is all happening. Um, I would just add, this is all at the same time. Trump has pulled his staff out of Virginia. Arizona shows a tie with her. One poll has her up by one. And in Florida, a really telling number. 503,000 new Democrats are registered in 2016 compared to the Republicans at 60,000. So we have to be really clear-eyed about what, this is, what is happening. And so com blaming the New York Times and Carlos Slim and all of these things is a distraction that is not helping him get to Wednesday night at that debate where he can make a convincing closing argument. Isn't Carlos Slim actually Anthony Weiner? <laughs> no, it's Danger. 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 Carlos, Carlos Danger. Both Carlos. Both Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would just, I, I would throw in, look, again, never are these oh. things okay. Yeah. We know a lot of them. We're hearing a lot of them. Uh, over time, they'll all be litigated, and we'll find out which ones are true, which ones aren't. Maybe they're all true. Who knows? But at the same time, you have Iran that's moving warships towards yep. our aircraft, aircraft yeah. carriers in, in, the, in the Gulf. We have ISIS who's promised to use exploding drones. And they did we it. We have a Syrian civil war that has now drawn in three world superpowers with nuclear weapons, mm -hmm. the, the Great Britain, America, and uh, the Russians. Who knows how that's going to blow huge up? huge humanitarian and in the meantime, crisis. Hillary Clinton's got all these emails. If I were the Trump campaign, I would just literally just pivot and stay on You know what I think issues. he should do? He should take the WikiLeaks thing, all, this, all the emails that he thinks are his top favorites, and he could just do a dramatic interpretation and just read them. He was up there for three hours today giving a speech. So I would just, if you want people to focus on WikiLeaks, then you got to talk about it. You can't right. just talk about all of your accusers and then just, and then insult them. So you're saying less defending and just more go on the attack in terms of Hillary Clinton. But I mean, he, he's already done the disclaimer. I deny all of these. I'll reveal the other thing he said about Hillary Clinton today is that when she walked in front of him at the debate, he wasn't impressed. Like, that's not impressive.
Right. All right? And the Republican helpful. men that are defending this are really irritating me. I've been like Mount Vesuvius all day. You have. Oh are we goodness. good? Are we, are we, oh, right? No, I'm still venting. And another thing. We, you and I, You're like a powerful <laughs> little volcano. Sure we're good, yeah, though. we're good. Okay. okay, okay. okay. Vesuvius. You clear that up. <laughs> we'll let you take a well, moment. You're not out there doing it. I mean, there <laughs> are people <laughs> like, uh, you know who you are. <laughs> and she's going to come mm -hmm, get you, and we're going to lock you in the freight elevator, yeah. and you're going to be screaming for your life. There used to be a thing. You know what? The Danish, what was it? The look? The lock was it? The lock? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. should put you in the. You know who you are, Ben Carson. L the look. <laughs> oh yeah, my you know goodness. Ben, and others. You Senator know what Sessions. Ben would say to you? <laughs> what? Cut the mic. Oh, cut, cut the my mic. mic. Cut the mic. <laughs> yeah, because women should be seen and not heard. Apparently. Well, finally, you agree After with me. After 20 years of defending these guys. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation. <laughs> well, we're, dom we're dominating the five today. I'll tell you that much. Conversation, but I must say, I don't think. You agree with Dana's strategy, by the way? What's her strategy? Well, her strategy is turn, pivot, talk about Hillary Clinton, talk about the emails, read it, that. and not. He's not doing that, and I don't know how effective it would be because the at the moment, what Dana also said is America is focused on sex talk mm -hmm. and sexual misbehavior, and it's hard. Even among us, if you if we start talking about sex, the say, oh yeah, you know, we should talk about Iranian threats <laughs> in the middle. You say, oh, oh what, what did you say about that sex <laughs> stuff? Uh, that's just human nature. So, but the thing that it that fascinates <laughs> me in terms of the politics of the response, Kimberly, yes, is that he's going after Paul Ryan. He's going after Paul Ryan much more than Hillary Clinton. He's going after the ladies that he says are falsely charged. He's going after Carlos Slim. But he's also going after Republicans. So he's at war with the party. And yeah. it's incredible. I mean, it, to me, I don't understand it except as performance art. And it is excellent, excellent <laughs> performance art. Everybody but, but, is captivated you know, by Donald Trump. What he's doing also is he's energizing. Now you, I know you're going to say there's not enough voters in the base, but do we know that for sure? We know there hasn't been enough voters in the base well, in the I know, past. I know you don't love polls, no, but, but I'm going to tell you the polls are pretty out, good. You're bringing out more and more voters than ever before, and you, Fine. you can't apply the same there might numbers be. from prior elections to this. Let me I'm just, just say, no, 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 let me even make this under point the, to you. Even under the, the Allow polls, me to speak for a moment. you still have... Statistical uh -huh. ties in almost every one of the battlegrounds. No, you don't. No, you do not. Sure, you do. Within no. the margin of error of, no. of all of them. Yes, you do. Want I'm it. saying. Do. I mean, right now, the the key and what swung mm -hmm. the swing states, Eric, and what's swinging the national numbers way beyond margin of error is the idea that Trump is now down among women. He used to be down about 12. Right, now right. he's down about 21. Yeah. And you know what? It used to be that the educated Republican women, Kimberly Guilfoyle, Dana Perino, were like, we're not sure about this Donald Trump guy. Now, working class Republican women are even with Trump and Hillary Clinton. But let's go back, I, let's go back and to that's swing killing states, though. Your swing and, states and have swing everyone. States, no, North it's Carolina, not. Ohio, Florida. Um, Eric, keep all, going all, because it, you're a living Colorado, in a delusion. All of them are within the margin of error. All right. Can no, 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 no. I bring up a study that just came out? American Psychological Association says that 52% of adults uh, say this election has been somewhat a, a somewhat significant source of stress. Yes. <laughs> this election is tearing people you apart. You think so? So you know what my solution is, Kimberly, and you yeah. know what it is. Begins with an R and ends with an S. Robots. We have to start thinking about our political leaders becoming automated. They have no past. If they have a past, you can erase it. You can't hack the robots. They don't have, they don't send emails. Uh, they don't have affairs. They don't assault women. Yes. I welcome our robot overlords. Death to humans. Um, I wouldn't yes. put it past a robot just yet. Let me well, a ro yeah. robot with you, I could see him being tempted. It's happened. <laughs> Straight ahead. Another, I love when Juan gives me Wow. Another. Another, <laughs> now we can't talk about Iranian missiles in <laughs> another big WikiLeaks email dropped today this one revealing panic within the Clinton camp over how to deal with the nominees private server controversy all the details next today WikiLeaks released a seventh batch of emails from the hacked account of Hillary Clinton's campaign chair John Podesta one message appears to the president uh, deeper into the private server controversy there is a lot to dissect so who better to bring in but election Ed Henry, who combed through them this morning. Ed, I have to say, one of my favorite ones that I just saw was apparently in one of these meetings, Hillary Clinton said to the environmental groups, they were meeting with environmental groups and unions, and she turns to the environmentalists and she says, get a life. Which that you know shows a <laughs> little actually, willingness to push back. But there's also yeah. a lot of concern and the flip-flopping. What have you found? 
Yeah, well, I think on the email question you mentioned, President Obama being drawn in here, what's interesting is there's an email from John Podesta to Cheryl Mills uh, from March of 2015 that basically says, should we hold back some emails uh, that were going back and forth between President Obama and Hillary Clinton? Why is that significant? Well, March 2015 is when the whole story you know, was burst open. The New York Times saying there was a private server, Trey Gowdy on the Hill, uh, issuing a subpoena saying preserve all these records. Hillary Clinton going out there and having that news conference saying all work-related emails uh, were turned over. And then at the end of that month, well, what happened? Well, the IT folks out in Colorado uh, deleted thousands of emails with BleachBit. So um, this doesn't prove anything, but it raises perhaps more questions about the timeline there uh, in terms of you know, what kind of emails were going back and forth between President Obama and Hillary Clinton that John Podesta and Cheryl Mills didn't want the public to see. And this is the, this is the same story that they thought would be over by the end of that weekend, <laughs> as it, we according that to, emails, the, yeah. to WikiLeaks. All right, we'll go around the table. Eric's next. Hey, election head. Um, a, a disturbing email, especially for me, is the one, one between John Podesta, Jennifer Palmieri, the Clinton spokesperson, and John Halpin, who worked at the Center for American yeah. Progress, a Podesta-founded organization. Uh, Halpin says, it's, amazing, it's an amazing bastardization of the faith. They must be attracted to the systemic thought and severely backwards gender relations and must be totally unaware of Christian democracy when talking about Catholics. And here's the yeah. part. Palmieri responds to that and says, I imagine they think it's most socially acceptable, politically conservative religion. Their rich friends wouldn't understand if they become if they became evangelicals. Here's my question. Yeah. Does Hillary Clinton understand that she not only offended 80 or 75 million Catholics, but also probably everyone of faith in the country? Or does she just not care that she did that? Well, I think based on our convention speech in Philadelphia, and you framed that quite interesting, I'll point out. Uh, <laughs> she, I don't think she said it, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't I don't think, think she, she said it. That, and she hasn't pushed back on it. And she it was in private yeah. email no, there, with somebody there, else. Come on. For, hey, Greg, calls you'll get your turn. To Greg, you'll get your turn. Hey, oh, you God. know what? Wait your turn, Greg. Wait your turn. All right, seriously. I can't help it. <laughs> the bottom line is that in Philadelphia, Hillary Clinton spoke very openly about her faith uh, and her Methodist faith, sh faith uh, shaping her. Uh, and so when this stuff comes out, you're right. It's highly embarrassing to her and to the campaign. It is pretty remarkable that they haven't apologized about it at all. Uh, and I think here's the bigger picture. is This is a campaign, the Clinton campaign, which is winning right now on the notion that Donald Trump is dividing the country. Hillary Clinton, her campaign theme is stronger together. Let's bring folks together. We are the world. Let's hug. All of that. And then when you look at the emails, they're beating up on Catholics. Uh, there's another email going after Latinos. There's an email today going after the former NAACP chief, uh, Ben Jealous. Uh, so it seems in private they're saying something much different than what they say in public. All right. Uh, Juan Williams. Oh, my God. What a surprise. People in their own <laughs> personal emails are actually saying something private. God forbid. Yeah. Shocking. Unreal. Yeah. Uh, we'll, go to, uh, we'll go to Juan next for a question. Well, I just want to reiterate turn, Greg. something that Greg turn. said. <laughs> Greg said she didn't write that. No, but she didn't push back on it. Uh, oh, Her please. spokesperson yeah. said it, and she has uh, not we, addressed it. Uh, you That's the problem. This, you keep hammering this like you're swinging at a here's, pitch here's this deal, 10 Juan. weeks ago. There are 70 million Catholics <laughs> right. right now who are offended by it. No, there are 69 million. I don't know. Are you going to talk to me? Ed Henry, listen, I have a real, I have two things I want to ask you about. One is, so, so in this WikiLeaks, there comes out 08, when Clinton is running against Obama, opposition research, it looks like to me, suggesting, oh, gosh, what about his middle name, Hussein? What about yeah. the idea that there are land deals that might bring into question? He doesn't put his hand over his heart. He doesn't wear a flag yeah. pin. What do you make of Where that? Have we heard that before. Well, I mean, okay. look, this is a playbook uh, that Democrats were talking about, and they've accused the Republicans of attacking President Obama with now for what eight eight years or more, uh, and they have attacked him. We should point out Republicans have done some of that, and Donald Trump has been uh, pilloried by the Clinton camp for birtherism and all of that uh, in this campaign. But remember, in that first debate at Hofstra, where Donald Trump was pushing back and saying, "No, no, wait a second, it was your campaign that started this." Now, I'm not going to litigate that. Let them fight it out. But I think the email you're pointing to talks about Clinton people back in 08. It's in John Podesta's private email account because he was involved back then as well. It's not about this campaign per se. But yes, you're right. You know, wait a second. The Clintons folks were talking about it too. Maybe Donald Trump had a point in that first debate. Well, I don't think he was talking about it. I never saw that they were talking about the birth. Or we're going to run out of time. Well, guys. Yeah. Muslim, whether he was Muslim or Christian, right. I'm just saying it's of the same piece. We're going to run out of time, so we got to get KG next. Okay. What about me? 
Do you can interrupt me. All right. Um, hi, Ed. So I just wanted to ask you, there's been a lot of discussion now about reopening an investigation, getting a special prosecutor, uh, convening a grand jury, because some of the revelations coming forward in this uh, WikiLeaks transmission are quite disturbing as it relates to that kind of the collusion, et cetera, with the Justice Department, with the administration well, yeah. and Hillary's campaign. Well, Mike Pence was on Fox and Friends, and you know, he certainly would like to see that happen. And I think what's, but it's unlikely, obviously, this close to the election, you know better than I, with your legal background and political background, because this is politics clashing with the legal. And that's the frustration in the Trump Pence campaign, which is that they think politics hijacked the facts with these emails spilling out, suggesting there was collusion and there may have been more problems with the emails. But frankly, the Trump Pence t ticket is talking about it. And it looks, at least right now, like people are not hearing them. Mm. That's okay. Ed, I got a statement and a question. The people who are <laughs> defending WikiLeaks keep saying that if you have nothing to hide, then you shouldn't fear hacking. I say that if you have nothing to hide, you're boring and you're not a human being, and I don't want to know you. If you don't Is have anything statement? interesting in your past, you're a loser. Robot. Every person has a private Robot. dark world, and they have a right to keep that world private and dark. Now to my question. So that's just your basement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ken Bone. Wow. Ken Bone, exactly, wow. perfect example. Exactly. exactly, that's it, you got Great it. Example. All right, Ed, do you have any idea how, uh, where WikiLeaks gets, gets this from? <laughs> like, what, is it Russia? Is it Guccifer? Does anybody care well, but me? How about Roger Stone? <laughs> there are, well, there are House Democrats who, this in the past hour, have come out and said they want to launch their own investigation. Kimberly asked about investigating the Clinton side. There are House Democrats now saying here in Washington, let's investigate Roger Stone's ties to the Russians. Why was he tweeting a few months ago uh, about how John Podesta and others might be targeted by these hacks? And so, look, that may just be spin from the Clinton camp, but they do have some evidence suggesting that there may, that may have been collusion on that side of this. So uh, I think the bottom line, though, Greg, when you talk about whether or not you're a loser, when you, you said that if there's nothing interesting in your background, it sounds like there's nothing interesting in your background. Oh. You can oh, that oh, I wouldn't go there, surprised. Ed. <laughs> I think the both of you should shut up. All right, thanks, Ed. Uh, those watching other networks aren't hearing much on these email findings. A breakdown of the mainstream media's WikiLeaks coverage. We'll have that next. Okay. Donald Trump blames the media for focusing too much on him, get that, and not enough on his opponent. Kimberly Strassel of the Wall Street Journal agrees. In a new column, Strassel argues that the press is ignoring bombshells from the WikiLeaks dumps and burying Hillary Clinton's, quote, sins. Kimberly Strassel writes, quote, Mrs. Clinton has been exposed to have no core, to be someone who constantly changes her position to maximize political gain. Voters might not know any of this because while both presidential candidates have plenty to answer for, the press has focused solely on taking out Mr. Trump, end quote. According to our research, that's pretty much on target. The three evening news shows on the broadcast networks either spent 30 seconds or less last night on the WikiLeaks revelations, or they didn't cover it at all. That was pretty much the same for the morning news shows today. They spent a minute or less on the emails, except for when Trump's running mate, Mike Pence, brought them up. Kimberly, uh, Mike Pence was struggling back and forth and trying to pivot, but the anchors would say, but we, we have you here, Mr. Pence, and so we want to talk about your running mate and his problems. Was that fair? No, it wasn't fair. Why? He should be able to talk about the emails and the WikiLeaks revelations as well, because it's important, it's significant, and it goes to the character and quality and her fitness to be president of the United States. So you should be devoting time to it. And you saw that he was on Fox and Friends, and they were able to talk about that here, because there wasn't just an agenda to just provide one side of the news cycle stories as it relates to the presidential uh, election. Um, you know, I think Pence is right to fight for topic discussion that he feels is relevant for the voters to be able to make an informed decision come November 8th. Eric, one of the points of comparison is the New York Times published a story about Donald Trump's taxes that was a leak, right? And then you have WikiLeaks now, and this is a leak, and people are saying, well, if the New York Times published that, why aren't they paying attention to this? The answer from David Barstow of the New York Times is, I only publish stuff where I can confirm that it's accurate and that it's real. And that I guess the point is, we don't know about the WikiLeaks stuff. Fair enough.
That, I, fair enough. And, but when, when you do know, then go ahead and pop. I guess. I don't know. Again, the privacy issues I have a problem with as well. But it, look at how these shows have, have treated it. Mind you, the numbers we put up for the, the, the evening newscasts, right. they're only 30 minute newscasts, and about 10 minutes of that is commercial. So, of 20 minutes, ABC had nine minutes of 20 with, on Trump, not 30 seconds on WikiLeaks, nine minutes on NBC, five minutes for Trump, 26 seconds, no mentions on NBC. But the one that really gets me is in the morning shows, where George Stephanopoulos basically runs that ABC morning show. Oh my gosh, look at the circle. Zero <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> on the WikiLeaks, zero minutes. At least this CBS this morning had one minute on it, and the Today Show had 30 seconds on it. They have they have hours upon hours to cover this stuff. That's that's appalling. And I just wonder if it was Stephanopoulos saying, "Hey, I used to work for these people. Maybe I'll just look they, the other way." Well, I'm not exactly sure how people make decisions on what gets covered and what's not, but I imagine what they want is ratings. So Donald Trump got a ton of free media at the beginning of, during the primary season from all sorts of media, and it was working in his favor because the networks got ratings. Now they're talking about Donald Trump because it helps them get their ratings. And the WikiLeaks thing obviously is probably not rating as well, but you can see more about this tomorrow because the Wall Street Journal editorial report, which runs on Saturdays at um, 3 p.m. on Fox News Channel, it's an hour-long program. I love it. Kim Strassel's always on, she'll, so she'll be able to in depth cover it a little bit more if you're interested. The story I think that's gotten very buried in all of this uh, Trump talk is the one that there is discontent at the FBI at high levels, upset about how the email was handled and, and, and Comey saying that there should be no indictment. That's the story I think that's been way buried and that's again, the big one. also could also have to do with ratings, but Donald Trump's not helping himself by continuing to So Greg, the is, fire. This, is this liberal media bias writ large? Well, you know what? When you look at the uh, the tiny ratio of, of of coverage devoted to WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks now knows what it feels like to be Marco Rubio or Rick Perry <laughs> or Jeb Bush, because during the primaries, Aww. that's exactly what the ratio was. Uh, yeah. So clearly, to your point, the Poor media guy. wants Hillary to win. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Even after devoting billions of dollars of free media to Trump, so do you feel that you were set up? Because you were. You were. You were set up. The media, well, you know including that, Hillary. WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks, I know, the only thing that I'm happy about. We, uh, uh, Hillary and Obama, they knew elevating Donald Trump, yep. giving him an air of respectability in the press as well, turned him into the Republican nominee. Then out came the only knives. Only so they could sandbag him because they knew that they could take a, yeah. crush his chances of the presidency yeah. well, and the agents, the news organizations that held information to only dump it for maximum fault. throttle impact. Their fault. We saw it coming and we were suckers. Well, you know, well we didn't have it. What do you mean? We didn't have the tape. Oh, I'm, I'm just talking about no, Common but sense. you know what, though? The, the, the media would be we treating Marco Rubio or Jeb Bush <laughs> yes, or, or, but, or uh, yeah, Casey Yeah, absolutely. But, but yeah, one yeah, of yeah, the yeah. things we Look did learn Romney. from yeah. WikiLeaks yeah. is, in fact, That's the true. Clinton campaign was far more concerned about Marco Rubio, Kasich, and others than Donald Trump. They preferred Donald Trump as the opposition. Stay right Didn't there. We all? Because the fastest seven, Dr. Eric Bowling, up next. One back time for that. The fastest six and a half or so on television. Three bold stories, seven brisk minutes, one brash host. First up, one of Trump's major complaints is that the media is in the tank for Hillary. We just highlighted mainstream media news organizations' unfair treatment, but not wanting to be left behind, television dramas boarded the Hillary bus. Check out Law & Order SVU's upcoming episode, which will feature a Trump-inspired character. Recall in an unforgettable performance. Know that I have nothing to hide. New SVU. Wednesday on NBC. All right, KG, that episode with the obvious political bias is set to air October 26th, just days before the election. Just days before. We've seen this happen before, have we not? But, I mean, it's not very surprising, given sort of the uh, liberal bent of the Hollywood media and what they like to do with their movies and their TV shows. So, I mean, do I think it's going to have a huge <laughs> impact, big league? <laughs> I mean, probably not. Doesn't help though. The narrative can, continues, right? Helps. Oh, I think the narrative. Them. Believe me, the narrative is going on without them. Yeah, right. But they do. For example, I know I'm on the board of a group, a juvenile law group in Philadelphia, and you know they found judges who were corrupt and sending kids to jail in order to get money uh, in exchange. Yeah. And they did a story about that. So they they pick up on things in the news, and I think they're just taking advantage of what's there right now. Ratings? Yeah, definitely ratings. Um, remember also when we watched Homeland and how mm -hmm. we were impressed because. 
the, they're in the middle of the season and they were actually able to adapt and talk about things that were happening in real time in the world. I thought that was impressive. But this goes back to what I said in the A Block. This is now in the pop culture world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And culture, politics flows after culture, right? That's right. Culture yeah, downstream and politics. From, yeah. And so, not good. And yeah. also keeps the narrative alive. Well, it's a it, law and order, the philosophy is torn from the newspaper mm -hmm. pages, but they do the stories terribly. They're always poorly written. They, uh, they take great actors, like Gary Cole, who's a fantastic actor, and they make them act bad. It's very yeah, ammy, it's very plastic, very stiff. What's but it, but, this, but it fits, well, it's because you watch it when you're homesick and, or unemployed, and you're just sitting there, and you just watch episode after. I've been there. You know I've watched is, 17 you know in a row. You know demographic is? is huge for women. Yeah, well, I, I was it, about to say you're insulting my wife, but I was I was insulting <laughs> myself. But the other thing, too, is in Law & Order, almost all criminals are rich, like white, upper crust, upper east side, Socialite, socialites, architects, Republican, Republican. <laughs> There's no street crime at all. Lot Gee, of wait a second. Oh, so go black on. people have no complaint here. Has managed to scroll the prompter well, to offend one quarter of the elector, <laughs> calling them deplorable. She's offended 70 million Catholics. She's offended quote needy Latinos. And now she may have offended millennials by suggesting that millennials prefer to watch cat videos over the news. They do. It makes you want to turn off the news. It makes you want to unplug the internet or just look at cat gifts. <laughs> Believe me, I get it. In the last few weeks, I've watched a lot of cats do a lot of weird and interesting things. But we have a job to do, and it'll be good for people and for cats. All right, Craig. Um all right, Craig. Feels like cat more expert. Than just cat I don't. I don't even know where this story came from because <laughs> I didn't even get that from there. I. I. Okay. If that's condescending, then every one of my one more things is condescending because I end each show on purpose with an animal video to cleanse the palate. Because if don't you've heard enough bad news, hyena. if you have enough bad news, I bring you a. Dirty hyena. So that's the that's the point. Everybody loves cat videos. <laughs> Everybody likes to. That's what how YouTube is made yeah. is off that stuff. Yeah. She Did might you get have, that Porter. Do you hear that? <laughs> you got that? All she right. might have seen this in the Wall Street Journal because do you remember last week I pitched a story to lighten things up around here that um it was a front page personal journal. I have photographic memory, so I remember it. And it said. The headline was, watching cat videos can be good for you. And right. it was this whole psychological study that some I university read had done that said it actually makes you feel better. They like, blah, blah, it does. Blah. Probably redu reduce Look at like, that. How I love that. Lisa's something like. endorphin. <laughs> oh, my God. How can you not love kitty, 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 Except if you're ISIS and you own a cat, they said, then it's punishable by death. They'll right. The, yep, that's but the other side of what she said is also true, and I think we've said this here, which is this is a tawdry campaign it just doesn't they're feel going good. after the cats now oh no, no let the yeah let the cats come in because most of us are feeling like wow when is this thing over 25 days 25 days exactly kitty and cat. uh um three and a half hours <laughs> 25 days three and a half hours go ahead kitty cat that's it it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> we got to do this very fast. Hillary Clinton appeared on the Ellen DeGeneres show. She made some news about feeling like Trump hovered near her during the last debate. Then this happened. For some reason, no one is talking about this moment, but we have to we have to show it. There's a lot at stake. This is not an ordinary time and this is not an ordinary election. We are going to be choosing the Supreme Court to energy and so much else. That was the best dancing I've ever done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was. That was my fa favorite video probably of the year so far. Juan, your thoughts? Well, if, I think that's where we're going with politics right now. I, I think you can go much lower in this campaign, but at least it will continue in the pop culture dance ridiculous mode. All right, quick around. Yeah, I loved it. I thought dancing was excellent, and she should have done it during the debate. <laughs> Very fun. It just it shows you again technology as it becomes more and more amazing. You can frame anybody. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, look at Ken I might Bones even be moves. able to look like a good dancer with that. Uh, there you I don't go. Think so. There you go. Let's okay. leave it right there. Oh, wow. wow. All right, next, Shut up, we'll answer your questions on the upcoming final showdown between Trump v. Clinton. Facebook Friday is ahead. Coming up. Facebook Friday, that is an F in it. Uh, so there are some questions here from uh, viewers, and they're going to be questions that um, you would answer if you were running for president. Oh, so okay. I'll go, yeah. So I'm pretending I'm running for yeah, president. Yeah, you could either Not be, as a character. You but could be as Trump myself? or what? What? Oh, uh, what you, how you think they would answer? How oh. you you think they should answer? This is from Michelle M. 
Our family has recently opened a small business. What advice would you give us for success as we pursue the American dream? Oh, my goodness. That is a great question. One, um, I admire the tenacity and the willingness to take a risk to own a small business. That's not easy. I do think it's really important to get to know who your congressman is and your senator. True. Um, they will... You, it, it's important that they know who you are, that they hear your stories. If they don't hear from you, somebody else is filling up their time. So I, I would suggest that. That's a good point. Eric, you're a businessman. Yeah, so if I'm running for president or if I'm Trump running or for president. Or advising, okay. advi what would you so, tell them? And if I'm running the artillery, I'd say if you're opening a small business and you want to be successful, I would say move to another country because the small businesses <laughs> are being choked in this country right now from oh, taxes yes. to Obamacare Thanks. to regulation. And I will tell you the, the big one, and, and you, you read the Wall Street Journal, the op-ed every day in the Wall Street Journal. Eric Metaxas yesterday talked about the, the estate tax, the death tax, mm -hmm. that is How killing, killing small business yeah. in America because of farmers and small businesses who are asset rich and cash poor, yep. and they can't turn over the farm or the business to their, their heirs because that is a huge, there's not enough huge money in the coffers. problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really is. Now, do you want this question or want me to move to the next one? Oh, I think we did a pretty good job on it. Whatever we like. Yeah, okay. So We're good with you, time, Kimberly, right? from Jason L. What is your vision? <laughs> of the future of America. Very, very specific question there. It's like a Miss Universe question. Yes. Imperialism <laughs> and world domination. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Very close to Trump. Not kidding. And she did it under time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but American exceptionalism. Mm -hmm. America back on top, taking the driver's seat in terms of national security, foreign policy, and being a leader in the world, not somebody who makes fake red lines, turns them pink, blurs them, and doesn't do anything about it. We're, we're not letting, letting our country be dictated by Russia or mm -hmm. China or North Korea or Iran. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I, why are you so anti-Trump today? I thought he, he likes Russia. He likes Putin. He wants to take direction from them. I would say... <laughs> I'm pro-KG. I would say... <laughs> KGB. On the first one, I... I you I know that's wanna, one of my nicknames. I just want to respond to Eric and say, you know what? People come to this country because it is such a wonderful country and has so much economic opportunity. Nobody's leaving. Nobody. In really? fact, big business and investment really? is coming I, into the United I, States I, I, of America. I think that's a, a, oh, yeah. an absolute if, false If you think people right are now. leaving, go. I don't see it. Businesses I don't see it. Fleeing. I've never seen Americans saying, oh, yeah, you business. know, America's a terrible place to do business. To the contrary, people say it's the best place in the world. Well, we have the strongest buyer. We have the strongest oh, buyer base. But, but as far oh, as doing uh, business, exporting, our business, our small exporting business exporting are being America. choked. Juan. No, they are not. Yes. I, and you know what I would say? It's tough to do small business because it's such a competitive market but, it but that doesn't no, no. mean it's that it's being to be choked. a small business because of competition it's yes it because is because of regulation no, and taxes and you can, Obama, you can excessive argue about taxation taxes. over regulation oh, yeah that's why i tell you what obamacare go, choking you go the to life Britain, out of your Canada, body you guys. i'd like to point out that i am literally a small businessman well, do we have time for a question? <laughs> what business are you in? What do you expect to get done in the first 100 days as president? Quickly. Um, I think uh, tax reform and Supreme Court. Build the wall. Make Mexico pay for it. <laughs> yes. The wall just got 10 feet higher. Oh, okay, my really? gosh. The one thing everybody agrees on, Republicans and Democrats, infrastructure. So you're going to see more jobs come out of more mm. infrastructure. Oh, here we go again. We had this. Supreme Court, <laughs> crush ISIS, and That's yes, cut back on taxes <laughs> and repeal and replace Obamacare. You, you know what the biggest infrastructure project in the world will be, right? Tell me. Build the wall. Build the wall. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no, I, uh, shovel ready. If I was president, <laughs> build the world's largest robot unicorn and ride it over the earth. Ew, what a weirdo. <laughs> yes, one more thing is up next. So weird. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not, stuck in an elevator. I'm stuck in an elevator and I can't get out. All right, it's time for one more thing, Dana. All right, so I went to dinner last night and so I wasn't wow. watching the news. Um, but when I got home, I was seeing all this stuff about Michelle Obama's speech yesterday in which she had a prepared speech, she got rid of it, and she spoke from the heart and probably one of the most effective sur surrogates of the campaign turns out to be Michelle Obama for Hillary Clinton. They didn't always get along, but just take a look at one of the things she said last night. The shameful comments about our bodies, the disrespect of our ambitions and intellect, the belief that you can do anything you want to a woman, it is cruel. It's, it's frightening. And the truth is, it hurts. It's a big news story. I just think Republicans should be aware that this is the kind of emotion that helps you get elected to president. And Hillary Clinton is lucky to have them. It's unbelievable it turned out this way. It really is true, but I think to make your point, 
she's being authentic and genuine. You can tell when she yeah. says that's how she really feels and representing. So, yeah, she's been a tremendously effective uh, surrogate for her. All right, Greg. Well, I'm, I just have to uh, plug my show. It's called The Greg Gutfeld Show. Oh. It's on Saturdays at 10 p.m. after the lovely Judge Janine. And I have Larry Gatlin, a country music western uh, singer, legend. Country western with, music singer. singer. Yes. Shelby Holiday, which sounds like the name of a really cool car. Yeah. Anyway, Tyrus and Cat Timpf. Nice. Um, Kimberly's Food Court. <laughs> oh, why it's not? <laughs> <laughs> this is Eric. <laughs> All that sharp meat Friday. made me tasty, hungry. <laughs> All right, whatever. Have, happy <laughs> National Dessert Day. And this is my favorite. Now, many of you might have thought I would do the Del Frisco's yellow cake. Mm -hmm. But what I decided to do was Magnolia Bakery, which truly in my heart, I love. I have cupcakes in my house. They're on display. You can't eat them. Was that your head? I'm, oh, yes, because I'm looking to okay, see which one I want. So here's the deal. This is banana pudding, which if you have ever, this is the most unbelievable thing you've ever tasted in your life. Oh. Everybody tell me quick. Plus the little cupcakes with the little sprinkles and everything We've on there. We've seen cupcakes before, Kimberly. 